Hey everyone, this is the second video in our new player to premium money making guide. In this video, we're going to be going from around 100,000 silver in net worth up to 1 million silver in net worth using completely safe methods. First, we're going to do some faction flagged solo dungeons to get a little bit of starting cash, and then we're going to do three different market manipulations. First, upgrading tier 4 gear to 4.1 and selling it back on the market. Then we're going to be salvaging cheap artifacts for more money, and lastly, melding tier 4 souls into artifacts, all of which are safe market investments. Okay, now that I've had a chance to have everything sell and I'm on the next day, I'm going to make one more quick upgrade to my gear before we go out and do our next step. So I'm going to buy 48 more tier 4 souls, so adept souls here. We're going to buy 48 of them so that we can upgrade our torch because this also effectively increases our damage by increasing their cooldowns and attack speed, allowing us to clear dungeons and things faster. So again, we're just going to go to the artifact foundry which is this little symbol here and we're going to go to the third tab at the bottom of it once we open it up here so third tab is the enchant tab um oh always remember you have to repair your gear before you uh enchant stuff or else it will not work so I'll go back to the repair station repair it for a small silver fee and then we can go back and we can enchant it Okay, so now that we're good with our gear, a lot of the money makers that we're going to be using throughout this uh, premium run is tied to faction flagging. Faction flagging is one of the best money makers right now if you do not have premium. And so to go to faction flagging, you're going to press M, or sorry, N, open your cluster map, and there will be a little flag depending on the town. This one is orange because we're on bridge watch. That says the faction enlistment is so you're going to go over there. We can't quite faction flag up yet because there are some requirements that we're going to go hit right now. So if you click on this, you're going to see you need to unlock expert adventure to be able to faction flag. So if you open up your destiny board with B, the uh, nodes directly up from the middle are the adventure nodes. You can see we're working on our adepts adventure right now. We need to fully unlock experts adventure before we can faction flag. And so that is gonna be our next goal. And so we need to get just overall, we need to get um, our own 10K fame to get the adepts one and then 157,000 fame for the experts one. So that's what we're gonna be working on. The second thing that we wanna get is uh, experts reaver here because this will allow us to do the highest tier of safe solo dungeons that we can do on the royal continent much easier um, so right now we only have adapts so we're going to go out and i'm going to go do some solo dungeons until i hit both of these nodes so i'm going to get experts adventure and uh, experts reaver so for solo dungeons, you can either choose to do tier 5 solo dungeons in the yellow zones. Don't worry, yellow zones are not dangerous. Technically, players can hard flag up and knock you down, but you won't really lose anything. You'll just lose some durability on your armor, and frankly, nobody does that anyways because they don't get anything out of it. The other option is to go back to the blue zones and do tier 4 solo dungeons. They'll be a little bit easier until you get the tier 5 of Reaver. However, the solo dungeons in tier 5 zones will still be very doable and give you larger rewards and more fame. Once you hit level 6 on your Spear Fighter, you can go ahead and switch your passive to the Life Seal one to help you keep healthy while you clear dungeons. Okay, so we've gone ahead and we just hit Experts Adventurer here. Uh, we've also made around up to 160k out of the silver bags, as well as have around 70k in inventory from the chest that we've looted. So we're going to hope we're not even going to finish this dungeon. We're just going to go back to town and we're going to make some upgrades and uh, get faction flagged. Once you get back to town, you should have around 100k, if not more, and so you're going to want to sell your cape and bag and upgrade them. So first off, you're going to want to buy a tier 4 or a Depths Thetford cape, along with 48 runes and 48 souls, so you can upgrade it to 4.2, as well as an Adepts bag and 96 runes, so you can upgrade it to 4.1. Okay, so we're pretty much all set up and ready now to do some real money making. We can go ahead and faction flag and do some dungeons. We want to get a little bit of starting cash to work with so that we can invest it into the market, into ourselves to get some upgrades and start making some real money. So if you uh, start by going over 
to open the cluster map and go to the faction enlistment person in Bridgewatch. It's up here. It's the orange one. And you should be able to enlist now. You press enlist and then also flag. And you can pretty much always be flagged up. As long as you don't go to red zones, you'll be safe. Uh, if you are in yellow zones, you can be knocked down and killed by other enemy faction flag players, but you won't actually lose anything. You'll just lose some durability on your gear and you'll respawn fairly close to where you were. So it's no big deal. And generally they won't chase you down too much if you're not in an active fighting zone. So pretty much what faction flagging is going to do is all of your activities, like the solo dungeons that we're going to be doing, are now going to give you faction points, which you can see up here, which you can spend on rewards so for example these beast hearts here cost 3,000 faction points and they can sell for around 50,000 silver so that's going to be a nice way for us to get some extra money while we do soul dungeons which is our next step in making money so now you can go out and do some solo dungeons while faction fly go to tier 5 yellow zones and just find some dungeons and you can pretty much go until you run out of food or your inventory fills up or you have to go and that will give you a nice little starting cash and a bunch of faction points that we can sell and invest into the market to make even more silver. Now the reason that we're still doing soul dungeons for money making is that because everything else, the other sort of three categories of activities of gathering, refining, and crafting are honestly just very very bad money until you get premium. So really, the only things that are good money makers before you have premium is doing PVM activities and soul dungeons are some of the best money for that, as well as PvP if you're good at PvP, but again, you're probably a new player, so that might be a little bit of a struggle, and then doing like market games and other different money making methods that aren't going to progress your account. So really, for making our premium money, we're mostly going to be doing PVM activities, especially at the start. And then once we get some money, then we can play some market games and use that money to make more money. But at the start, it really just is you're going to have to do a lot of solo dungeons to get your money up at the start. If you have some friends or enjoy group activities more, you can also do group dungeons. However, I think they're a little bit less money per hour. They'll be a little bit better fame, but you won't quite make as much money. Also, feel free to use whatever build that you want to. The one that I have given you and the one that I'm using is just one of the best, if not the best, solo dungeon clearing builds, so it's quite fast. If you use something else, it won't quite be as fast, but really, you're going to be doing a lot of solo dungeons, and so the most important thing is that you enjoy it. If you don't enjoy Spear and enjoy using some other weapon instead, it's probably going to be better for you to use that other weapon, even if it is a little bit slower. Now, if you want to have a little bit more fun while making your money, I've added a section close to the end of this video that has some funner but slower money making methods. So you'll have probably more enjoyment in making your money, but it will be significantly slower. So if you want to go check that one out, um, you can just quickly skip ahead to that and do those activities instead of solo dungeons. Okay, we just finished our first trip of solo dungeons at Wall Faction Flag. So I'm just finishing up my second food here. It took me around an hour. I think I got a little bit lucky with loot. We're sitting at 200k here, as well as some items sold in the market and some silver bags put me up to 157k in my inventory as well. Let's check on faction points. See, so I got around 1.6k faction points, which isn't great, but um, it will get more as we go on. So I think I'm just going to save them for now rather than buy bridge watch crusts. Um, and so now we're going to go ahead and sell everything in our inventory and then start some investment opportunities. So we're going to invest some of the silver that we have into the market and probably upgrade my gear so we can do soul dungeons even faster so that we can make even more money per hour. Okay, so we've got everything sold. I took a little bit of break to let some things uh, it's finished selling and we're sitting at 236k. I think the first thing that I want to invest in uh, is upgrading my weapon and offhand so that I can do dungeons a little bit faster. Um, now, we've done enough dungeons to the point where I am at uh, level 13 in Spear and uh, Torch Fighter, so that means I can use up to tier 5. So I think I'm going to upgrade to a 5.2 Spear instead of the 4.2. I could upgrade this to 4.3, but I think it's going to be uh, more cost efficient to upgrade them to... 5.2 rather than 4.3 um, so we're going to sell these and then buy some 5.2s so the 5.2 spears and torches on the market were a little bit too expensive so instead i just bought the flat five ones and then bought the runes and souls myself to upgrade them and it was a much cheaper option 
Okay, so now after we've upgraded our weapon and offhand, we're still left with 150k approximately, and we don't really want to leave this just sitting around. We'd rather invest it into the market so that we can make some passive money while we go out and do some more dungeons. So one way to make more money passively is to upgrade gear by flat four off of the market and buy tier four runes off of the market and then combine them, upgrade them, and then sell it back to the market. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on screen here how many runes you need for each item to upgrade it. Different types of items need a different amount to upgrade them. And then we're just going to do a little bit of research to see which items have a big gap between the flat 4 and the 4.1 on the market so we can make some money. So I'm going to go ahead and search up for some different items and see which ones have decent profit margins. Actually, I think before I do that, I'm going to go over, if you go down to this third tab here, rather than buy the runes and stuff directly, we're going to set up some buy orders. It will take a little bit longer to buy them, but we'll get them a little bit cheaper. So we're going to go buy our tier four runes to start off with. Looks like we can get them for either 13 or 14. Uh, there's a lot in there for 13 already. So I think I'll just buy them. Uh, we'll put a buy order in for, for 13 silver each. And let's see, how many should we buy? Um, we have 150k, so let's buy maybe 5,000 of them. Spend half my money on these tier 4 runes. So 66k we're going to invest into tier 4 runes, and eventually these will come in. Um, and now we're just going to look for some tier 4 flat items that we can uh, use those runes on to upgrade them to get a good profit. One thing to keep in mind when doing this method is make sure you check how often the 4.1 versions of these items actually sell on the market. You can do that through the little graph at the bottom of the pullout side tab there, because if they don't sell very often, it's going to take a really long time for them to sell and you might get undercut a bunch and it will just be really awkward to get them off your hands. So make sure the things that you're trying to sell in 4.1 actually do sell fairly commonly so you can make sure that you can actually flip them. Okay, so I've gone ahead and set up some buy orders for some different items. I've gone for the Infernal Scythe, uh, Incubus Mace, Stalker Hood, Judicator Helmet, Judicator Boots, Kite of Shield, and Sarcophagus. Um, and I'm down now to 11k silver on my character. So we're going to wait. We're going to do some dungeons, wait till these things uh, come in, my buy orders come in, and then we can upgrade all these and put them back onto the market and make some money. Okay, while I'm waiting for those things to sell or the buy orders to come in, actually, I'm going to go make some more money. So I'm going to go and do probably another hour or so of solo dungeons. And then when I come back, we're going to do uh, a different way of making money through another different sort of market investment. Okay, so we are back from our solo dungeon trip. I did around an hour worth of solo dungeons again, and we've come away with around 139k in the inventory as well as some silver bags got me up to there faction points were now sitting at 3.5k as we were able to complete the daily for the faction um so i might go ahead and buy a beast heart here i'm not actually sure which is better to go with the beast hearts or the crests um we'll just go beast heart they're probably around the same anyways so uh that's going to be a nice around 50k um looks like those are uh, so you can get around 7 into this, so 4 times 7. Yeah, so beast hearts are definitely more value. Um, so I'm going to go sell this all off, and then we'll start with a, another money-making method. Okay, so after selling all of my items, it looks like my buy orders have came in, at least some of them. Um, obviously, there's still some left. Looks like a lot of the runes have come in, and not as many of the items. So we're just going to collect all of them to get them out of the way. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do to invest my 180k I have here in the market is artifact salvaging. So pretty much any artifact can be made up from runes or salvaged back into runes, uh, souls, and relics. And so there's a little table I'm putting on screen here that I've just quickly made. On the left column there, we have the type of rune or soul that the artifact is made from and the estimated price that I think I could probably sell it on the market. The base column is just how much base money you get from salvaging an artifact of that kind and then the rune sell is just how much the runes will sell for. You get around 12.5 runes per artifact that you salvage or souls or relics and then the total money that I will get if I salvage a one of those artifacts. So if I go in the market here and I select the artifact category this is going to get me the ones, usually the rune ones. So if we look at our tier four rune table there, I can sell or I can salvage anything that is under 247 silver to make money. Now there's nothing over to under 247 silver right now. So I'm not going to make any money from salvaging anything tier four. So I can check tier five 
it's anything under 656. There's a couple things here. This thing's 600. That's pretty decent. These guys are barely making any money, so I probably won't even bother doing those. Let's check on tier sixes. Uh, the value is 2788 that I have to be, and these are pretty good margins. So I'll go and I'll buy up all of these that are under that 2788 price point. actually quite a lot which is very good for me um, I'm just gonna hop onto tier 7s just to see if there's tier 7s as well these are going for 6k and I can sell them for or salvage them for around 9k so again that's very good as well and there's not as many of these so I'll just quickly buy these up and now let's check on tier 8s uh, no tier 8s I bought this one earlier just to test how much you'd get for it so there's no tier 8s right now so I'm gonna go back to tier 6s and I'm gonna buy everything under uh, let's say 2.5k Oh, wow, there's a lot of them here. Uh, so that's good. And we're getting pretty close to 2.5k here, so... Um, and I'm running fairly low on money, but I should make some good profits off of all of these. Okay, and we're getting close enough to... Uh, low money and we've got a fair amount of artifacts so now I'm just going to go out and if you go into town you can salvage them at a couple of places I'm just going to use the repair station since we know where that is uh, and it's fairly close to the market so you just go to the repair station here and then on the second tab there'll be a salvage tab so we're going to go down there and then we're just going to shift click all of these into there and you can see we're going to get uh, around 18,000 silver and uh, just some tier 5 ones for that some tier uh, 7 runes for those and then a bunch of tier 6 runes for salvage and now we have a bunch of runes and ooh, I'm very overweight but I'm gonna go and pop these in the market for the price that I thought I could sell them at now you can do this for souls as well and relics as well however they're going to be harder to find you need to know which artifacts uh, require souls and relics because runes are going to be the cheapest ones so they're going to be easy to find if you just sort by artifact so for example I know that um, an occult orb is a one that takes souls so if I check my chart here uh, I could also make money off of this one because I can salvage them for around 18 or 100 silver so I can make around 500 silver for one of these I do as well um, so if you want to look into doing souls as well you can do that uh, runes are just the easiest to find though so I'm gonna go and sell all of these and then we should have made some more profit okay so now you can see that uh, we only have 41k but we if you go down to our orders tab here in the market we can see that we have a lot of money that's invested into the market right now but all of these things are going to turn a big profit for me uh, especially all these things that are selling that's a lot of money just waiting to be put into my bank account and so i'm going to go out for one more trip waiting for some of these orders to come through do some soul dungeons make some more money and then we'll cover one more sort of market game that you can play to make money uh, that is good with around this amount of silver Okay, so I did a quick trip last night and then went to bed and we're back today. It seems like a lot of stuff has sold since then. We're at uh, 333k, which is very nice. And it looks like we've also had some of my buy orders come in from the first money making method. So we're going to quickly first collect these, enchant them up and sell them back on the market. And then we'll get on to our last money making method. Okay, so just to show how profitable this first money maker can be, just take a look at our average at estimated inventory market worth here it's at 131k currently before we enchant everything um so i'm gonna go ahead and enchant it and let's watch it go up all right so that it now it is up to 151k so we made just a real easy 20k uh, by investing some in the market there and that wasn't even that much honestly probably the the estimates aren't even that accurate as i bought them from buy orders which is quite low so I'll probably make even more than 20k just off of these items and i still haven't even gotten all the other ones in yet so uh that is some pretty good money okay so for our last money making method we're going to use a similar method to our second one except kind of in reverse so essentially you can make artifacts out of runes souls and relics by melding them down so we're going to be using tier four souls here and so essentially if i take 36 souls and i take them to the artifact foundry and melt them down i will get a random artifact uh, that can be created from them and so i'm going to put 
a table on screen here with all of the possible items that you can make out of souls and so essentially if the average cost or the average sell price of these items is greater than the cost of 36 souls i'll be making profits and i've done all of this i, I recently just checked them all and i will make a profit by doing this i would suggest you to make uh, sort of a table and average all the prices out just to see if you can make profit as this uh, out of this as well and we will make profit if we do it so i'm going to go ahead and buy just a bunch of souls and then we're going to meld them down into artifacts and then we'll probably combine it with the last method so the cheapest artifacts i will just go ahead and meld back down into souls okay so we just quickly bought some off of the market here but i think i'm also going to set up a buy order for some um so we can get a little bit more in the long run um so if there you get 36 per artifacts i think i'll do how much is 360 39k can i do 3600 not quite okay so we'll do um what is a multiple of 36 yeah we'll just do 720 for now um and we'll just do a little bit and then we'll we'll collect them soon okay so i'm going to take these ones though that i've already bought um, and we're going to go to the same thing to the artifact foundry and we're going to meld them down and hopefully make some profit now this is gambling so we might not make a profit the first time but it is pretty high profit margins uh, at least how in terms of how i've just checked them so we should make money but um we never know you can always get unlucky so melding is the first tab here we're using tier four souls so we get tier four at the top uh it says the second is choosing the type of artifact so we're going souls and then we want to make sure we're on the completely random any tabs that only cost 36 rather than 50. Um, we're just going to meld these down Okay, so we've melted them down. I think I got pretty lucky as our inventory is now at 158k, which is a lot higher than it was at the start. Um, but I'm also just going to organize these quickly and find the ones that are super cheap and are actually more efficient just to um, recycle back down. So I'm going to organize this really quickly and then we'll recycle some of them and uh, melt again. Okay, so it looks like we had uh, around four artifacts that were not worth it that I lost money on the rest seems like I made money on them so I did get quite lucky um so we're actually going to go salvage these down and get souls back as well as some silver same as what we were doing in the previous money making method um and then we're actually just going to go right back and salvage them or, or meld meld them back up again sorry actually we can only do one but that's all right uh, and we get a demonic jawbone which again is good um, so now we're going to go sell all these artifacts and turn a profit and wait for our other souls to come in with our buy orders. Uh, so it looks like my soul buy order actually came in completely just while we were doing that. So I'm actually going to set up another one since we made a lot of money. Might as well do it. Um, and again, we're going to go 108 silver and we're going to get around uh, 720 of them again. Create another buy order and we're going to go and do the exact same thing with these. Okay, so we've got them all set up on the market to get sold as well as a buy order coming in. The only downside about this method is that you can't use it too much and if too many people are doing it, it's not very good because these artifacts don't sell very fast. A lot of them don't sell very fast. Some of them do, but most of them don't. And so uh, you can really flood the market if you try to do this too much. But overall, I think we, we made a really good investment there. That was probably one of the, the better money making methods we've done so far. Okay, so while all the methods I have just shown you are very good for making money, getting your first sort of 1 million, these methods are pretty much optimal for 100k to 1 mil. They do rely on you sort of getting that money from solo dungeons to invest into the market. And I've chosen solo dungeons because they're pretty much the best money you can make to actually go out into the world and get money and not from playing market games. Now, if you aren't enjoying solo dungeons as much, there are some other funner activities that you can do to make money. However, they're not going to be as efficient. It's going to be a lot slower to make your money, but you can have more fun doing them. And so for you, it might be more worth it. So if you want to have a little bit more fun getting money from like sort of 100k to 1 mil or just getting money so you can invest it into the market, I would suggest doing your daily. So if you go up to the top right of your screen here, there's this little scroll icon and many of these things have sort of daily challenges. So first is Arena. Arena is like a 5v5 PvP mode. It's safe. It's fun. Um, you just essentially cap some points with your team. And at the end, every three wins that you get, you get some rewards. So you get three arena sigils, which can sell for around 6.7k each. You get 
uh, two big tomes of insight, which give you 40,000 combat fame, which is pretty nice. And then you also get a bag of silver, which gives you, I think, 10,000 silver. And you can do these and get three wins a day, so you can get three times all of these rewards. Actually, if you play as a healer, you also get um, another Tome of Insight here as a bonus reward because not many people like playing healers. So uh, that can be a fun way to get some money. Lastly, we have Faction Warfare, which every day if you go and do either Soul Dungeons as Faction, you have to do quite a lot of Soul Dungeons to get this uh, daily point reward. But if you go and do Outposts, just look on the map um, and open up your big map and on this top right here it says no political view switch to the faction warfare view and you can see um, where some fights are make sure you stay in blue and yellow zones so you're safe so i could go for example to father or trough and fight uh, the martlock that is pushing here with bridge watch and it would get me points towards that total and for these you get again chests that give you some money as well as faction points that you can sell uh, or buy items and sell them on the market for money Lastly, there's also Hunter Corrupted Dungeons, so if you go, I showed you a Corrupted Dungeon earlier, and I think in the first episode, they're similar to Soul Dungeons, except they have 1v1 PvP as well. Since you're likely a new player, you probably won't win that much, but they can be a fun way to sort of get PvP while you're doing something like Soul Dungeons, and they will guarantee you make you money. It just probably won't be quite as fast as real Soul Dungeons. So those are all really good options if you want to make uh, money, not quite as fast as solo dungeons, but have a lot more fun doing so. So that's pretty much it. Essentially, you just want to repeat this process and do whatever your sort of favorite activities or favorite market manipulations are until you have around 1 million silver. So this is essentially the best strategies in this video for getting from your starting 100k to around 1 million silver worth on your character. So at the end of this episode, you should be around a net worth of 1 million silver. Next episode, we'll take that 1 million silver that you've made and make some larger investments and start having a little bit of risk, just a tiny bit, so that you can make even more profits and get your premium money very quickly. Right.